to say as we go along, but we've got a lot of stories, and y'all have heard from me, a lot of you. I do have some things I want to share, but right now I'm going to turn it over to this handsome man in the back. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nemo. <laughs> So this is Kenny Mons. Kenny is my brother in Christ. He's um, a dear friend that we have got to meet on the prison tour circuit. We were able to um, go in, we're paired together a lot of times when we go in like field class or inmate encounter and we just always found ourselves doing programs together. We're like, you know what, we kind of like each other. We enjoy going in and it would be the two of us. And then it became the three of us with Mr. Pat, and then it became the four of us with Mr. Corey, and now it's the ten of us. So it's, uh, we're having a lot of fun, but he's going to share his gift with you, his stories with you. I think we have a request for a chicken song. Did I hear that? Yeah. So take it away, Ken. Good to be back to see you guys. I want to teach you guys a, a portion of this song I want to start with. It's called Changed because my life has been changed dramatically from what it was. But there's your part is, is, is you got two, two parts. First one is <laughs> let's do it. One, two. Your second one is Let's hear it. One, two. All right, that'll work. Academy of Country Music Awards in 1973, 
from the Academy of Country Music for a vocal group of the year, a touring band of the year. And we toured with guys like Johnny Cash and Merle Haggard and, and all kinds of big stars. And the thing is, I got kicked out of that band after a couple of years for drinking and drugging. <laughs> and it was a Christian band, supposed to be a Christian band, and I was supposed to be a Christian. And, uh, but anyway, I, I, you know, things happen. We get, we get drawn away and fall into temptation. And the next thing you know, we're doing stuff we don't want to do. <laughs> you know? Or actually, well, we, we do want to do it, but we know we shouldn't be doing it. Whoa, my goodness, that's loud. But anyway, I remember those days of drinking and drugging, and, and God was gracious to me and met me on a freeway in Los Angeles. That's part of my story that I, I don't have time to tell. I'm the opening act here, so. Uh, but I will, I will say that I was, uh, I'll tell just a little bit of it. I was going down a freeway, uh, just got fired from a job because I was an iron worker, believe it or not, for a little portion of my life, and I was punking for a welder. I don't know if you guys know what that means, but dragging his cables around for him, and, we were on the ninth floor of a high rise smoking a joint. And uh, the foreman came along and fired us. And I went down to my car and I thought, well, another job, I've lost another job. And I got in my car, my car, the power windows wouldn't roll up. They were broken. Well, so when I looked in the window, I saw my 12 pack of Budweiser that I had bought on the way to work that morning. And I drank four of them on the way. So when I saw that beer, I went, ah, I felt relief, like, oh, my friend, my beer. And I get in and <laughs> I, I crank open another one and driving out of the parking lot and I spilled beer in my lap. It looked like I wet my pants. And I'm driving out, I get on the, the freeway, Highway 10, and I'm driving toward Los Angeles and, and I lit up a cigarette and smoked a couple of hits off of the cigarette and put it in the ashtray. Then I remembered I had some speed in, in a little Ziploc bag, and so I <laughs> pulled that Ziploc bag out, and here I'm driving down the freeway 65 miles an hour with the windows down, and I got a little spoon in a little bag of powder, you know, and I'm trying to snort it up my nose while I'm driving down the freeway. And most of it powder ended up on my face, you know, and my mustache. So I, uh, <laughs> I looked in the rearview mirror to see if there was a policeman behind me, and there wasn't. Then I smelled marijuana. I thought, man, I haven't lit up. What, where'd, that, where'd that come from? I looked down at my cigarette and set fire to my roaches. <laughs> and they were falling out on top of all the empty beer bottles that I had thrown into the floor and I was kicking around. And man, it's like my whole life just, it's like a, just flashed before me. This was my life. This was it. This is what I depended on. I looked up in the mirror again, and there were tear tracks coming down through the powder on my face. I thought, what's going on? I really didn't know. And I felt like I wanted to cry. I just felt like that. I just felt bubbled up inside of me. So I pulled off the freeway, and I sat there in the parking lot, and I bawled, and I just cried and cried, and I, and I just said, God, please help me. I don't know why I said it. I just said it. Amen. And pretty soon I stopped crying, and tears dried, and I just, whoosh, I just felt so much better, like I just had a bath. And then I remembered there was a man who lived just down the freeway a ways, and I knew where I was supposed to go. This was all God planned here. This man was the executive director of two of the largest rehab facilities in the county of Los Angeles. And he was a friend of mine. I drive up to his house, he's getting out of his car, walking up to his doorstep. I get out of my car and I'm walking toward him on the sidewalk with the, you know, my wet, you know, looked like I wet my pants, I had powder all over my face, you know, and I'm crying and I'm walking toward him. And he looked at me and said, well, what, what happened to you? And I said the most important three words, that I'd ever said, I said, I need help. And normally it takes months to get in these places. In Los Angeles County, there's a lot of addicts and there's a lot of alcoholics. And three days later, I walked into Acton Rehab's facility. That was in February 7th, 1990. 
and I've been clean and sober now for 32 plus years. And I learned to take it one day at a time. Every time I say I'll never drink again, I end up with whiskey dripping on my chin. No matter how I tried, you know I couldn't last for long. Well, then I heard somebody tell me, said you're working this thing all wrong. Just take it one day, one day at a time. Sing it with me, come on. Just take it one day, one day at a time. But if you sell off forever, you can sure enough to lose your mind. I knew that this was something that I had to try. And suddenly I noticed how to stay dry. Sometimes I even had to cook my day in two. But it's your very difference in my personal point of view. Here we go. I'm begging one day, one day at a time. Chickens in the sky. 
reception center and, and this officer came in he says you're going into this this pod, pod here there was an upper tier and a lower tier and he says these guys have come in they don't know where they're going what prison they're going to we're just getting ready to ship them out and they're kind of concerned <laughs> so you got time to sing one song to them go on. And I'm thinking, one song? How do you make connections with somebody with just one song? So I'm walking around out in the, uh, in the hallway there, waiting to go into this, this pod. And I'm trying to think of the songs that I had written and what I could sing. What can I sing to these guys? And I'm going through all my songs. Finally, the Lord just said, write a song. Well, I had about 20 minutes before I went into this pod. <laughs> so I wrote this song. Well, actually, God wrote this song. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Ready for something? Are you ready? For something good to come your way. Are you ready? Open your heart now and hear what the Lord he says, I love you. Oh, yes, I love Prison. 
in uh, Huntsville. And, and anyway, they, uh, they took me down to this pod and there were some guys on, well, they weren't, it wasn't a pod, it was a basketball pavilion. There were some guys on some bleachers there, about 200 of them or so. And they had a microphone set up. I'm, I'm walking up to the mic and they're, the guy's introducing me in Spanish. And I, I asked him, I said, do they speak English? And he said, no, not really. A little bit. I speak a little bit, but you don't worry about it. Use whatever you sing, they're going to like it. I said, yeah, but I don't know any songs in Spanish. I got to looking, and they were all Latino guys. About that time, one of them yelled out, Freddie Fender! <laughs> Now, being an old country singer, I knew about Freddie Fender. I'd done some of his songs, so I said, all right, I'll do a Freddie Fender song. If he bring you happiness, then I will do both the best. It's your happiness that matters most of all. But if he ever breaks your heart, if the tear drops, every stop, I'll be there before the next tear drop falls. Well, they just went berserk. <laughs> Man, I'm doing good. <laughs> then I remembered the next verse was in Spanish. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't know it. <laughs> They're all looking at me wanting to hear that Spanish verse. And I just made something up. <laughs> Holy, 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 holy. 
Shine, shine, shine.